You remind me when I was in Pal Talk, you know, those Pal Talk, they are the same as YouTube, they are liberals. And they want to find any excuse to block me from coming to their program. So they forbid me from using the word sex. So we agree with those who listen to me. When I want to say Muhammad have sex, I say cuckoo, cuckoo. Muhammad, he want to have cuckoo. Imagine the second I say the word sex, you, the, the pal talk, they have a porn chat rooms. Literally porn, you know what porn? Seriously, they have a chat for porn. Women and girls, they open their camera showing their penises and their vagina. But in my chat room, if I say the word sex, they kick me out of the program. Just say sex. It's not allowed. Yet they have a sanction in Pal Talk for adult. It is in red. First time I said adult. Well, I am adult. I don't know what this is about. I said, okay, adult. I don't want to click at the other sections because maybe they are for kids. So I click at adult section. You enter the chat room. One guy holding his penis. The other guy is, the, you know, I mean, it's a, it's a messed up. Other person is licking the toes of someone else. It's and me in my chat room. If I say the word sex, they kick me out. The same in YouTube. They keep harassing me. If you are a Muslim, you say, I want to behead you. You post a beheading video. They post videos for Hamas, shooting the Jews, killing the Jews. Nobody take them down. Christian Prince, he say anything. He said, this is against our policy. This is against our policy. So you will notice that everything they say to us is absolutely false. Muhammad obviously is mentally ill. Look at this. I mean, who can defeat this proof that Muhammad is mentally ill? Not only Muhammad he hear voices, Muhammad, he received the most important chapter, which the Muslim, they pray five times a day. During the time, he was doing shit. The first question I asked myself, can this angel wait until Muhammad finished doing his shit? Excuse my language, it's, it's shit, what I can say. I mean, I cannot change it. Read with me here, and the Muslim, they try to fix it. They say, whenever... He, which means Muhammad, he went out, which means to do shit, used to hear someone calling him, Oh, Muhammad. And whenever he hear this, he used to flee. What? He's, what? This guy already, he received tons of chapters of the Quran. So why when he hear the voice of the, the angel, he run away? And why the angel don't speak to him unless he is doing poo poo? Can't he speak to him when he is not out inside the house? Whenever he went out, he used to hear someone calling him. Someone, what do you mean, someone? What is that? And here, Muhammad already, he is a prophet, supposedly, he received chapters. He announced himself. What the heck? Is that the first time Muhammad here is he heard this? Maybe, maybe Jibreel he changed his voice each time he speak to him, so this time did not recognize him. Like he was talking like this. But the Fitr, I gave the Prophet Muhammad, and he went to win it, boo -boo. And I said to him, Prophet Muhammad, Prophet Muhammad, he thought running. I'm brother Fitr. I will explain to you why Prophet Muhammad is running. First of all, it was very dark. And Prophet Muhammad, he made people in his pants when it's dark. He saw scared of pants. So because it's dark, I spoke to him at dark because I don't want people to see me. So he go out to do a poo, poo and I cannot go to him at night because already have women around him. So I said to myself, I'm going to take Prophet Muhammad when he is going out to do poo, -poo. And then when he go out with the poo, poo he ran away from me. What the heck is that?
the angel he speak to Muhammad and Muhammad he hear a sound and then he run away and look Waraq ibn Awfal which is I believe he is the real father of Muhammad he slept with his mother advise the prophet to remain in his place when the caller calls him hold on are you saying to me that your prophet is not wise enough and he is so coward to the point he cannot stand in his place and say who are you who is there what Muhammad he do when he hear the sound he flee like Mickey Mouse Tom and Jerry then this guy he advised Muhammad what if Muhammad did not listen to this guy to listen to him? The verses will not come to him. Another clear proof that Muhammad is suffering from mental illness. Muhammad, he tried to commit suicide many times. All of this is in their books. Everything we are showing you, this is from their books and it's authentic. Read carefully and laugh with me. Waraka ibn Nufal, obviously, he is the one who made Quran. You will see here that Waraka, he was translating the gospel into Arabic. Read carefully. In the pre-Islamic era, Waraka, he became a Christian, which is false. Obviously, he is not a Christian. He is a heretic. And he used to write the Arabic writing. Do you see the Arabic writing? The Arabic writing. And he used to write of the gospel in Arabic. What did that prove to us? That the Arabic, uh, uh, there's no Arabic Bible. There's no Arabic Bible. This guy, he speak, obviously, Syriac, mostly. So, he was writing in Arabic, copying it from the Gospel. What does that mean? That means the Gospel is exist. He have his hand on the Gospel. But the reality, he is not writing the Gospel. He is writing things from the Gospel. He used to write of the gospel in Arabic. So what the book he's writing? It's in Arabic. That is the Quran. As much Allah wished him to write. He was an old man, has lost his sight, eyesight. Khadija said to him, oh, my cousin, listen to the story of my nephew. And here the story is very funny about Muhammad being squeezed by an angel. And then this guy, he told him, oh, this is an angel for sure. But you will notice here that when Waraka died, after a few days, Waraka died, and the divine inspiration was also paused for a while. And the prophet becomes so sad, as we heard, ha that he intended several times to throw himself from the top of high mountains. Oh boy. Remember, we are talking about mental illness. This guy in his video, he says mental illness can happen if it, if it is a punishment from God. It can be a punishment from God. Okay. So why Muhammad wanna do that? I have somebody, he, he is wearing the clothes of Hajj, he wanna talk to us, let us, let us call him. <laughs> Looked like he just came from Hajj. Hello? Yes, my friend, you are live on air. Are you a Muslim? Hello? Hello, can you hear me? I hear you. Are you a Muslim? Uh, first of all, my name is Salman. Uh, I watched a lot of videos of you. I really enjoyed them. Okay. 
Um, but I see you have a picture of you in the in the Hajj. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you went to Hajj. Yep. So why are you enjoying my videos if you are a Muslim? Uh, I am not a Muslim now. Oh, you I'm left Islam? Yep. Oh, okay. Why you left Islam? Don't you want to have an endless penis? Uh, can you repeat that again? Don't you like to have an endless penis as a prophet of Allah? He promised you. Uh, I left Islam since like four years or three years now. So before uh, you start listening to me or after? Excuse me? Uh, you, you left Islam before you start listening to me or after? Oh, before. Oh, okay. So I have no, uh, I have no credit. <laughs> That's sad. Oh, no, no problem. <laughs> anyway, I'm happy for you. So, But why you left Islam? Well, there are billions of reasons like um it was in quarantine time okay i had a lot of free times so i could uh, think more before that there was no quarantine and uh, most of my day were like full i had everything to do like i was in school i came here and had to do stuff didn't have that much time to think and question things mm -hmm. uh, in quarantine i really started to to question things deeply like scientifically, philosophically, uh, in points of moral points, everything. The more I questioned, the, the more I realized it just crumbles from every point of view, like from morality and from scientific point of view, okay. from everything. What, what is the most point you, you think it was the reason for you to abandon Islam? Um, my father was... Uh, most of his life working outside the country okay. was always traveling outside and when he when the quarantine time came okay. he usually uh, used to visit our house from uh, once a year okay. and when he came it was like one one or two weeks like that and when he visited almost every time like he had a problem with my mother like they always discussed and uh, sometimes even beat, beat her and when the quarantine time came, came um, and he, he was in in our house i knew it was gonna be a bad thing it was gonna it was not gonna be good why because i knew him very well i knew that uh, if we are staying and my father is staying so much longer with my mother mm -hmm. uh, it's gonna be very bad like you mean they start fighting? You mean? Yep. Oh, okay. Uh, All right. <laughs> like you don't have to give me uh, like personal details. So, what is the most mm -hmm. striking reason for you to decide that Islam? Like you, you mentioned mm -hmm. that uh, uh, scientifically is wrong, uh, morally is wrong. But what is the most important? Yep. You think it was like the 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 point where you 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 said to yourself, "That's it." I didn't really question until my father really just came up with hadith to to what what it's called to justify his points on beating my mom or okay. just doing whatever he did. Like he he used to beat my mom. If I didn't separate them, it would be very worse. Even my mom could 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 be dead. Mm. <sighs> Sorry to hear that. The other day he came and gave so many hadiths uh, to justify his points. If you and he said, uh, "Do you believe in this? You, you you are Muslim, right? This is your prophet." He said in this hadith that uh, if a man says to his woman, "You you should hold this thing and hold it like forever," she should hold it for like forever. And yeah. a very absurd thing. Not only that, I, the hadith said, says okay, if. Uh, uh, if a man he told his wife to lick his buzz, he should she should lick it, and she will not yes, do enough to her husband. Things. Yeah. He even came with, uh, with like photocopies of, of the hadiths, and I, and I was like so absurd. I didn't even believe that. Like how a, how the hell can a god just do this thing? It's more likely that a ma than a, that uh, a maniac man wrote this religion. So I started to question it and. <clears throat> That's the point I started to question it. So you know, like from uh, from your sad experience with your father and your mother, 
Uh, what, like, what do you think about Christianity that the, the Messiah, he command the man to love his wife the same as the Messiah, he gave himself to the church, which means in Christianity, the women, she become equal to the church. And there's no way a Christian man, he would disrespect the church, but his duty is to give himself. So mm -hmm. it is a relationship of unity, like the man, he leave his parents, the Bible says, and he become echad with his wife, echad, which is the same word, Muhammad, he copied from the Bible, they say ahad, which means unity. So the man and the women, they become unity. So if a man disrespect his wife, he disrespect himself, because you are, they are unity. And if the women disrespect her husband, she disrespect herself because they are a unity. So how you think, what do you think about comparing between both? Your mother life with my, uh, you know, I feel sorry for her and your dad. And the way Christianity teach the man to treat his wife. Like for almost a year, I've been considering to uh, to believe in Christianity, like it's very hard to not believe in a God or not be in a community or in a religion. Okay. It's really, really tough. Like, I have really tried to believe in Christianity. I even tried to uh, visit a church. I live in Turkey, by the way. Mm -hmm. You don't have uh, to give uh, details. And uh, what is called? Yeah, I really tried to know more about uh, the Christian religion and that that stuff but like if you have any questions you would like to learn from me i will be happy to to help you uh but anyway like what do you like to say to us the people are listening and i'm happy really that you are you decide to uh, to come out of islam uh what about your mom my mom and my entire family are they're still muslims they think i'm i'm still a muslim they, they think I'm a Muslim and I don't just pray. Mm. They think I'm lazy. Yeah, they're, they're all still Muslims. Do you speak, do you, did you speak to your mom about why Islam, do you think it's not good or something? Not so much, but I just tell her, like, do you think, do you see, like, uh, a man what can do this, 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 and you don't believe in them? You don't accept them. You go. You, you uh, you've gone to church, uh, to court. You, you did not go to a scholar to uh, solve between you both. You have gone to scholar for, for like past ten times, and scholar did not do anything. Justified every time my father. So my mom, uh, she gone to a, a court and she solved it there. Like, mm. If she she herself really believed in in the religion, she she would still go to a scholar. But she even doesn't believe in, in her heart, but doesn't have the courage to question the religion and say the stuff. By the way, I'm sorry if I sound like kind of weird because it's the first time I speak English. Uh, and no problem. Because, you know, like this. No problem. Don't worry about it. You know, English is not my first language too. Uh, well, I don't know. What do you like to share with people here? Like you're calling me, and I don't want to. I don't want to push you toward the Christianity. But if you like to know anything about Christianity, I would be happy to answer you. Yeah, I really try to believe, but I can't. Like, why? Amazing. What is the problem with the Christianity? You think you, you, the, the reason you could not believe? Like when I was Muslim, okay. uh, the Christianity always was like. Uh, they just changed the, always the stuff. It's very corrupt. They, why you? Why you? Th why you think so? No, I don't think so. They. I was always caught oh, okay. like this. Okay. Always heard it like this. They, in in Islam, you know, like they don't take any religion seriously except Islam. Like always say Buddhists, they are they are stupid. They pray to uh, stones. Hmm. And but Jews don't the, think, but don't the Muslims kiss stones? Uh, excuse me? Don't the Muslim kiss stones themselves? Yeah. So if the Buddhists are stupid because they kiss stones, how will Muslims explain kissing stones? Why Muhammad he kissed the I don't stones? Know. In Islam you even have, uh, you even have like uh, pagan stuff in Islam. A lot of pagan things. Oh, well, the Kaaba itself is a pagan. All the rituals, Safa, Al-Marwa, 
uh, throwing rocks at the house of Satan. All of those are from the pagan era before Islam. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Muhammad, he just adopt everything. Going around Tawaf, you know, Tawaf. I don't know if you know the Hadith. Uh, there's a Hadith saying that the, uh, the, a Muslim man, he says, before Islam, we use, uh, we look in the desert to find the rock. If we find the good rock, we put it in the middle and we do Tawaf. We go around it. If we could not find, uh, 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 if we could not find a stone, which is good to do tawaf around it, uh, we make a, we 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 milk a sheep, uh, and we mix the milk with dirt, and we make a rock, and then we go to do tawaf around it. So if, this is exactly what the Arab used to do before Islam. They used to go around the Kaaba. The Kaaba had many idols, and the Muslims go around it. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Even like uh, a lot of stuff also came from the previous pagan culture. All of it, as an example, cutting the hand of a thief. This is what the Arab used to do as pagan. Uh, a crucifixion. This is from the Roman, the pagan Roman. Crucifixion. You know, as a punishment, you will find that the Quran, Allah claimed that the crucifixion is a punishment from him. But all of us, we knew that this is not, cannot be from him. Uh, everything Muhammad he did uh, is a theft from somebody else. Like stoning to death, he took it from the Jews. Crucifixion, he took it from the Roman. Cutting hands, he took it from the uh, the uh, pagan Arab before Islam. And he took it wrong always. Uh, and the, the Islamic calendar, he took it from the pagan too. But Muhammad, he screwed it up because he said that... Uh, 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 you know, there's something that's called a nest and the sea, or like when you, uh, you know, because the, the Islamic calendar is a moon calendar, so the moon calendar it's short, correct? Mm -hmm. So, what, what, what the, the people who practice, uh, wow. or let us say, follow the calendar, the moon calendar, in order to fix the wrong of it, they have to add days at the end of the year to do what to fix it because simply it's not correct. So Muhammad, he claimed suddenly, for no reason, which is a proven again that Muhammad is a false man and he is not a prophet of God. He claimed that the correction of the calendar by adding days is from the kuffar, which is true. It is from the pagan, <laughs> but it's the right thing to do. So if you go to chapter nine, verse number 37, it says that post pawning of a secret moth because they have to add days is an addition to this belief so since then Muhammadan they don't have a good calendar why because now we cannot fix the calendar this is why you will see a Muslim he fast in Ramadan but Ramadan can be in January correct it can be in July it can be in August is that true it can be any minute. yep because it keep moving why because the stupid Muhammad he decide to destroy the calendar, which is not a perfect calendar, but they knew how to correct it. They are copying what the Jews they do. So they add days to the end of the year to fix it. What Muhammad he does? He said, don't add days, don't post upon those occasions because this is from the kuffar and we should not follow it. And now the month, which is called Ramadan, which means the month of being thirsty, it should be happen in the middle of the summer. Now it can happen in June. In June. It can happen in December. It can happen in the February. If we if we ask the Muslims, uh, when is the birthday of Muhammad? You will find that the birthday of Muhammad. They are every month. Different kind of answers. No exact uh, year. Actually, in fact, sometimes the birthday of Muhammad can happen twice in the same week, the same the same year. <laughs> in the same year you can celebrate the birthday of Muhammad twice why because the stupid Muhammad decide to destroy the calculation of the Islamic calendar and since then the birthday of Muhammad 
it doesn't occur in a certain month no more. So imagine somebody he is born in July. Next year he is uh, he's born in August. Next year he is born in September. The year after it, October, November, December. Uh, uh, how that work? How this is can be against Allah? How fixing a calendar can be against Allah? Why Allah is deceiving them if he is God and making them follow a calendar which is messed up? Do you have any uh, Muslim uh, scholar can join us and debate me? Do you know anybody? The strongest scholar I knew, he, my father, my uncle, every every one, single one of them, they are really uh, religious Muslims, but they, they don't speak English or the, I don't talk with them. What language do you speak? Turkish? No, we are Persians, by the way. Oh, okay. Uh, even if, if they could talk i uh, i'm not really uh, ha having a good relationship with them i see i understand for, i understand for i understand this is the prophet muhammad i'm showing the screen prophet muhammad birthday 2024 2025 2026 okay in 2024 it is it is uh, september 16 in 2025 it is september 5th and it is in september 7 <laughs> and then in in uh, 2026 it's august 25th and the list goes on how muhammad birthday can be all over the place simply because muhammad decided to do this he decided to mess up the calendar claiming his god told him that fixing the calendar is from the devil which is absolutely false what is going to hurt god that somebody is doing the right thing by fixing a calendar. It's just com completely absurd. Yeah. Like, Tibla, like, let's say you live in the opposite of the world, opposite side of the Me Mecca. How, how, in what direction are you praying to, to, to God? Like, you cannot pray to Mecca because the Earth is not a flat. You know, the Earth. If the Earth is a flat. Then I can say, okay, maybe we have direction to somewhere. Like, you know, the Jews, they pray in the in direction of Jerusalem when they go to fight, but they are fighting like in the in the, a few miles away from the city. But to pray, and you are living in Australia or living in, uh, even in Turkey, you are hundreds, a thousand of miles away. It's impossible to face Mecca because the earth is not flat. Exactly. It's just an old age religion. They believed in the world, the earth was flat. And they... Yeah, in fact, the Quran says it clearly in the chapter of Al-Nazi'at, it says, well, Ardu Allah, he made the earth flat. The earth, he made it besought in different verse, besought, garbage, flat, you know, mm -hmm. a firosh, a bed, you know. So there's tons of verses in the Quran making clear explanation that the earth is a flat. Chapter 2, verse number 22. Mm -hmm. You know? Uh, chapter 51, verse number 48. All of them, they say, Allah, he made the earth as a bed for you flat. And the earth, the sky is a canopy. Is a, is a building. And a roof, which is absolutely false. Roof from what? Like, the, is, is the sky is a roof for the earth, like maybe the atmosphere? No. A roof where you cannot get out, as the Quran says, that when the genie, they try to spy at Allah, Allah will show them by stars. This is the roof, a guarded roof. Muhammad definitely, definitely thought that the, the sky was a solid thing, like it was about to fall, but Allah is holding, always holding it. They thought, they thought like it was a blue solid thing, always about to fall on earth. Yeah. Well, I'm happy that you left Islam, my friend. And I, if you have a question in the future about the Bible, I will be happy to help you. Yeah, I really try to uh, look up for Christianity and uh, what what should I do? What, what, how should I start? Well, you can start reading the Bible and try to understand the... the uh, the character of Jesus, who is the Messiah, what he wants from us, 
what his wisdom, what his words about, what what how he can improve my life. You know, the, the point of uh, becoming a believer in something is to believe first that my belief will help me to be a better person, right? Mm -hmm. To improve me. And then there's other things in the belief, like there is salvation, there is a, uh, you go and live with the Lord eternity. But the first thing is, the most important, does that belief improve my life and make me a better person or a worse person? A person convert to Islam second day, he want to do jihad, he want to kill his neighbor. A person, he become a Christian, what he will do? Let us say you become an extreme Christian. An extreme Christian is a monk. He served the world. He loved the world. He gave his life to the world. So an extreme Muslim is a, is a killer, is a criminal, is someone, in fact, there's no extreme Muslim, there's no extreme Christian, either Christian or not Christian, either Muslim or not Muslim. So a true Muslim is someone who followed the steps of Muhammad. He killed his neighbor, he raped his wife, he kidnapped his daughters. A exactly. true Christian is someone, he says, love your enemy. Bless those who curse you. So we need to look first to see if Christ make us a better people. J Jesus himself, and we as a Christian, we worship him as God. He did wash the feet of his disciples. Okay, why Jesus wash the feet? What he's trying to do? I mean, why somebody, those people, they worship him, yet he go down on the ground and he hold their feet and he forced them because he said to them, when they refused, they said, oh Lord, you cannot do that. They said, if you don't let me do it, you don't belong to me. And he explained why. He said, if you cannot be a servant, you cannot be a master. So when we read and we learn from the Messiah, we learn many things. We learn how to be humble, how to be beautiful, how to be merciful, how to be loving, and how to be strong. All those things together, when they are exist in a person, regardless if it's a male or a female, will make your life like a jewel. You will become like a jewel, a shiny jewel between your people, because you will be unique. You are a great because you are humble, not because you are so proud. You are strong because you are so kind, not because you are arrogant and criminal. And this is what the Messiah will give to your life. And then, you will find salvation with him because this is the promise of the Messiah as Lord, as Savior. Whoever believe in me and die, he will live, the Messiah said. And I believe every word he said. This week, I, I will visit a church and I will talk to, to the priests of there. And I will try to learn as much as I can in this uh, religion. I will even buy a thick Bible really consider it well i would be happy to hear from you anytime you have a question you can call me all right yeah thank you very much man and i, I really enjoyed your videos and your uh, debates you are welcome and i hope you are taking notes same time when you this when you when you try to read the bible try not to read as a reader try to live the story like try to imagine the story not only read words because words can I mean, just you know empty you know that uh, unless you go in the story, then you live the story and then you will understand it and live it and you will enjoy it. But words is just words. You know, Jesus, he said, Jesus went, Jesus stood up. Well, we don't want to read a book just because he said. We want to understand very well what he said. We are not the same as the Muslims who memorize a book. It's not required to memorize. It's required to understand and have the spirit of the words. So what I encourage you is when you read the Bible, not to seek reading, but to seek the spirit of those words, what the words will say to you, to you as a person, individual, whatever your name is. So the Bible speak to you as an individual. The Bible does not, not only speak to billions, speak to individual. You will find that every story in the Bible can, can fit somehow with you as your life today, as your problems, even though we are exist 2000 years after Jesus, still the Bible work in a magical way to fit with my life, my, my daily life every day. So try to read it, but not to read, but to live the story and to have the spirit of the story. So like when Jesus, he did heal, is he doing a show, is that a circus? Is Jesus showing, hey, let me show you what I can do? No, 
Jesus did not do heal people to show them his power. In fact, sometime he told them, don't tell anyone. Don't tell them I did that to you. And then you will ask yourself why Jesus don't want people to know. Then you will be able to understand more and more Jesus. So Jesus, if I am the one who can raise people from death, I will be so proud. I mean, what only? Only proud? I will be like unbelievable. Like who, who can talk to me? If kings will bow down to me because all kings will die, all president will die. Who in the world don't will not wish to have a relationship, a friendship, or a kind of protection from someone he have power over death, which means they can live forever. So Jesus, he raised people from death, yet he is very humble and he is washing feet. Jesus make the blind see, yet he don't take money, he don't get paid, he don't ask for anything for himself. Jesus, he make a person who cannot walk, why just say, carry your bed and walk. The man, he carry his bed and walk. The Bible says that there's nobody can count even the miracles of Jesus. Even the Quran could not ignore, the book of the devil, Muhammad, could not ignore that Jesus' miraculous life is amazing. All of those miracles, they want to tell us what about Jesus? What is the purpose of those miracles? It's just to tell us that Jesus, he can do things nobody do. Or the miracle is one of the clear evidence that the Messiah is the Messiah who is a promise to be sent to save mankind. And he is capable of saving us. So the Messiah himself, he himself is a miracle. He himself is born of a virgin. Not only he do miracle, but he himself is the miracle. And that is God. God is a miracle, the Bible says. So I hope you will learn and you will have the spirit of the Bible when you read it. So next time when you call me, you will give me a good news. I really hope so, man. Uh, All right. I'm happy to hear from you. And feel free to call me anytime. Absolutely, man. All right. Take care. And I, I ask all the Christians to pray for this gentleman. And uh, may the Lord, you know, uh, open his eyes and help him uh, to come to him and to be saved. Thank you for calling. Thank you, man. Thank okay, you very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right. I'm sorry for the money you waste to go to Hajj. What a waste of money. Right? I see many people talking about me in the chat. You can say whatever you want about me in the chat. You don't even know me. And here you notice, by the way, when people, they start speaking negative about you. That's good. I, I will tell you why. People speak against you either because really truly you are negative and you are a bad person or they are trying to make you look bad. But yet it doesn't matter which one of them, they don't dare to call me and get me busted to be what they say. Then you need to ask yourself what's wrong. Like there's a person he's saying Christian Prince is not humble. What do you want me to do? What is exactly that mean? What, what do you mean not humble? What humble mean? Say to you, you are right when you are stupid? Do you want me to be politically correct and that will make you humble? Well, for sure I will not be humble. If you are a dumb, I am very thankful that I'm not like you. Call me, prove me wrong. I challenge you even to explain what the word humble mean. I'm sure you do not know even what you are saying. Call me, here we go, Skype, they are posting it for you. I challenge you, go. Why you don't call me? Do you know what the word humble mean? Big mouth, but they don't dare to, to debate you. They don't dare to prove you wrong. Even though, remember, you know, my English is not that, that strong, which means you can, if you are a person who is, you know, born in England or in America, you speak way better language than me. So you have advantage over me. But yet they don't dare to call me. Do you know why? Because you are a potato. 
And by the way, I have a copyright over the word potato. I use the word potato for a reason. You see, all those Muslims who they claim they have knowledge of Islam, they are potatoes. Otherwise, why they don't call? All would take them is to call me once and destroy me, and nobody will listen to me. People, they will notice Christian Prince. He know nothing. He is nobody, and nobody will listen to me. Why they are avoiding the match, the potato match? Because they knew I will fry them. You said polygamy is for mental illness. Abraham and Jacob, they were. Okay, hold on. Let us go and examine this. Just to show you how stupid you are. If we go in the Bible, we will see that Abraham, he did not practice polygamy for the sake of polygamy. Abraham, he wanted to have a children. Why you don't call me? And what does this have to do with him, Bull? This is supposed to be about being wrong. <laughs> Correct, people? What does this have to do with being humble or not humble? This is about being right or wrong. So did Abraham seek another woman for the sake of sex? I'm waiting for you. And then we will go to Jacob. I'm waiting. Why Abraham had more than one wife? I'm waiting. You don't know why. Or you are a person who complained, but you don't know what to say. <coughs> I don't care if you are a Muslim or not. What kind of answer this answer? You said to me that I am not humble because they said polygamy is for mental illness. Yes, it is. It is. The Bible say clearly, don't multiply your wives. Is that true? So now call me. And get me busted. Sorry, CP, keep going. Hmm? What do you mean, sorry, CP? I know what to say to people. They complain. You don't know how to make, you know, if the Lord Himself could not make people happy, I will make people happy, I will not. Mission impossible. The purpose of polygamy, the reason a man he seek it, because he like to have more women in his bed. To explain it to you in a, let us say, in a, in, in, a, in a different way. Let us say here, let us open uh, a page. Which page? We need the page which... Uh, Just to draw something for you. <clears throat> I'm just seeking an, an empty page, white page, so we can. Okay, here we go. You see, when when Muhammad he say in the Quran that Allahu wa malaikatahu yusalluna and Nabi Allah and the angels they are praying on Muhammad. This is polygamy. Ooh, well, how is that? Okay. You have a person who become the center of everything around him. So God, angels, believers, women, everybody is exists for one reason. To satisfy him, satisfy his needs. 
In the case of polygamy, it's not only about sex. No, there's many other things. Is you being the center of interest. Simply, you being God. So those who do polygamy, what they are seeking in reality is to have a wheel, and this wheel of life go around them. Everything, all those women, they are fighting to compete to make him happy. In bed, in food, it doesn't matter how. In singing, in dancing, in stripping, Otherwise, one woman is what God created for Adam. Did God make a mistake when he said in the Bible, multiply, not, don't multiply your wives? Did God make a mistake when he created only Adam and Eve? Was Adam a happy person because one woman is not good, is not enough? So simply, Polygamy for sure is a sign of mental illness because there is no need of it. Except self-worship, it's about selfishness. What if the women, you ask the Muslims, why the man he can have many wives but the wife cannot have many men? They say to you, oh, the man, he is the one who is in charge of the house because he has money. Well, Khadija, she was the boss of Muhammad. Muhammad worked for her. And she can afford for sure having many husbands. In fact, she has three husbands. In fact, the Arab used to have many, the, the women, they have many husbands. And when she delivered a child, she decided who is the father. So what Islam did, Islam is switch from the women have a choice to the man only choice. So Islam is a man-made religion for the sake of the man, to serve the man, to worship the man. Muhammad, he said actually, a woman, if she suck the buzz of her husband, she did not do enough to him yet. Why a woman she need to suck the buzz of the husband? How that will make her a good woman? Muhammad said, if there is someone to worship after God, I will command women to worship their husbands. Why you want to worship the husband? Is, the, is he a husband or is God? Hmm? Do we have any Muslim? Anyone? It's a sickness. Imagine Muhammad is forcing women to suck the buzz of infection of the man. And yet this is the same woman. He can divorce her in one second and replace her by others. She is nobody. A woman, she cannot say no to her husband, even if you want to do boom, boom to her in the top of the camel. Why a man want to do to her boom, boom in the top of the camel? Is he an animal? Is that what Muslims do? Have sex in the street?
Any Muhammadan? And the hadith about this, uh, I can find it. Give me a second. <laughs> uh, look like this website don't have it. It should be here. Uh, let us see a different one. Same. But we can find it in Arabic, no problem. Uh, let's see. <laughs> All those references here, actually is about the women she is being a slave of the man Muhammad he made it clear actually if he commanded one day a woman to bow down to somebody beside God is going to be her husband why Isn't it this is what paganism is about? Why the women she prostrate herself before her husband? This is what polygamy is about. It's paganism. It's worshipping fake God. Say polygamy is sin, it is sin. You see, just to show you how stupid some people are, polygamy is sin when there is a law against it. As an example, this idiot, he keeps saying stupid things. When the children of Adam, they had sex with their sisters. Was that sin? The answer, no. But is having sex with your sister is a sin? The answer, yes. Big deal. So you're an idiot. You are literally an idiot. Sin it is when it says don't do so. Sin it is not if there is no command about it. So when God he gave the command, did he told Abraham don't have more than one wife? Did he say to him, don't, and then Abraham, he disobey? No. There is no command. If there is no command, there is no sin. When Adam, he committed sin, what was a sin? He disobeyed the command. Anything else he can do. Correct? This is the garden. Do whatever you want. Jump in the tree. Cut in the tree. Eat. Jump. Have sex with your wife. Do whatever you want. But don't go there. That is the only command. So what is sin? Is to disobey the command. In Genesis 2, 24, which parents had left Adam left to join his wife? Look how stupid he is, this guy. I mean, this guy obviously suffering from mental illness. You idiot. How Adam will join, he will leave his parents if he is the first man. I mean, are you a person who eat poo poo? And you think it's food? So you want, look, look, look how smart he is. Man, that's deep. Touch so deep. In America, they call it that is deep potato, but poo poo. 
So now you are asking, Adam, he left who? His parents? He's the first man. You stupid idiot. Don't you know that even Eve is created from the limbs of Adam? So they are united already? <laughs> You're a donkey. Yet you claim that you know your Bible. Is it Adam? Is where Eve is created. So she is from his body. So they are already one. In fact, when God created Adam, he called both of them Adam. Eve was called Adam, and Adam was called Adam. You see how stupid you are? Yet you claim that you are pastor, imam, rabbi, potato, tomato, all of this together. Oh boy. You remind me of uh, what his name, Rabbi Sham Shalumi, Shamoli, what his name, the one who debated David Wood, sorry, not David Wood, uh, Muhammad Hijab. He told him Islam is beautiful. I mean, imagine how stupid this one who called himself Rabbi. He will approve something. What is that? That Hamas is bad. So what he say, Islam is beautiful. So if Hamas is Islam is beautiful, why Hamas is ugly? I mean, do you see the stupid hypocrite liars? They call themselves rabbis. They call themselves, and those are the ones they invite them because they make poo, poo Those are the ones they invite them to debate. Islam is beautiful. This is what the rabbi, he said. Do we have any Abdul? Anyone? This is why, by the way, I find that maybe most of those called rabbi, they are fraud. They are doing poetical business. In fact, they are the they are anti-Israel. They promote false information against Israel. So now whoever heard this debate, suppose he is there to, to, to defend Israel, did he? In fact, no. He said, Islam is beautiful. So Muhammad command to kill every Jew, is that because Islam is beautiful? Muhammad raped the Jews, Muhammad enslaved the Jews, Muhammad tortured the Jews, Muhammad he brought a guy, he's a Jewish man, they keep beating him to tell them where he hide his money. And then the idiot who he claimed to be a rabbi, he say Islam is beautiful. And by the way, we have the same garbage between us. We have those who claim to be Christian ministers or priests and they defend Islam. A lot of them, they are the sons of the devil. This is why when you go to a church or even if you are a Jew, if the rabbi he said to you, we are Muslim worship the same God, your rabbi is a devilish man. He served the devil. The God of Islam is not even a spirit. The God of Islam did not give Moses the Ten Commandments. The God of Islam, he commanded to break the Ten Commandments, each one of them and more. When you go to so-called a church, I say so-called because I'm talking about certain priests. And those people, they say to you, well, we worship the same God. Tell him where, how? Well, our God is Jesus. Is there God is Jesus? No. So how we worship the same God? Our God is a spirit. Is there God is a spirit? No. So how we worship the same God when the nature of the God is not even the same? In our heaven, there is no sex, nothing of that. Their heaven is nothing but a porn station. How we have the same God, but we have totally opposite heaven. Our God teach us to love our enemy, to bless those who curse us, their God teach them to hate and kill and rape. How we have the same God? 
there's a lot of people they lie to you and they claim to be Christians in fact those are more dangerous than the Muslim Sheikh themselves for they are the same as the mole is the termite inside your house in the house of God they are the termite And I advise you actually, if you go to a church, this is how you know if this is church is a place of God or not. You ask them, what do you think about homosexuality? They start saying to you, God love everybody. Listen, a potato, listen to me. I am not asking you God love who and God hate who. I'm asking you, what do you think about homosexuality? Will God accept everybody? Hold on, listen. They don't even dare to give you an answer for the question. Do you go around it? Did I ask you if God loves everybody? No, God don't love everybody. That is a big fat lie. We can go right now and find tens of verses in the Bible about how God, he cursed the wicked ones. Who said so? So why we have hell? When the Bible says, because God, he loved the world, he sent his only begotten son, is to save them from their wickedness. But he don't love the man for his wickedness. He loved the man to be saved. But if you are wicked, you will go to hell. So if you are a thief, if you are a criminal, if you are a drug dealer, if you, if you are whatever you are, you will go to hell. Do we have any Muhammadan? Okay, you know, uh, the guy, the, you call yourself prophet. Why you don't call me? Why you don't call me? I just searched in the, in the, in the internet. This guy, he's saying, Show me one verse against polygamy. And guess what? Right away, the first thing came to me, in front of me, 100 verse against polygamy. Just 100. And this guy saying to you, show me one. I think the reason you are defending polygamy because you are a sick person and you like to have multiple partners. Otherwise, in fact, if Christianity or the Bible promote polygamy, I advise you to leave it. The first verse in the Bible says, but because of the temptation and sexual immorality, each man should have his own wife and each woman her, her own husband. Show me one verse in the Bible. All oh, the Bible speak against it. And you are a potato. Do we have any Muhammadan here? The easiest way to find if somebody is a pedophile, if he get upset, if you insult a pedophile. The easiest way to find out that a person he like to have multi partners if when he upset if you say you should not have multi partners otherwise why he would be upset it's like a thief and he is wanted each time he hear 
the police car he think it's coming for him unless you live in New York then they will bring you the, the, the Amazon delivery if you live in New York or Chicago the police in your service there not to arrest you but to protect you when you attack people or to, to do commit a theft I mean imagine those stupid states five or six migrant illegal migrant they attack the policemen they beat them and they let them go imagine if we beat a man I mean a, American they cannot beat a policeman but migrant they can poor me they are poor migrant you know and they want to be give them now a credit card <laughs> stupid liberals mental illness do we have any Mohammedan? This is why liberals, by the way, they join forces against America with Muslims. This is why liberals, they join terrorists against Israel. Because liberals, they are suffering from mental illness, severe mental illness. I mean, he will find somebody holding the flag of the homosexual and he go screaming in the street, free Palestine. If we send him to so-called Palestine, he will be dead in two seconds. They will kill him. It's the truth. It's a fact. Yet they join them because simply they are suffering from mental illness. Who is here for the first time? If you are here for the first time, don't forget to subscribe. You see, we don't ask people to subscribe, but just to remind you, because I know people, they come, they go, they don't. So we don't even have 4,000. You know, I'm leaving my account in YouTube, which have 156,000. And I come in here because here we, we can keep our videos. Until now, thank God, Rumble did not harass us and hope they will never. Uh, so invite your friends and by the way some people they struggle with the rumble they say it doesn't work good for them use opera opera is a browser it's free and it have uh, uh, like a, a, a proxy and i noticed that those who they are using opera they are doing very good uh, I can post for you. I don't know what uh, you are using, uh, Mac or uh, or Window. Uh, anyway, you can search for download Opera. All right. And then, based on your computer, uh, is going to tell you, when you click, is going to open for you Mac or Window. All right. It's for free. They have VPN for free. For free. So if you are living in a country where they block, like in Indonesia, they told me that uh, Humble is, uh, sorry, Rumble is, is blocked in their country. Uh, well, be sure to turn the VPN. You can go to the setting and uh, turn it on and that will change everything for you. It's for free. All right. Any Mohammedan? How many of you are using Opera? How many of you are using Opera? Let me see. Uh, I will open Opera and post the link for Rumble there. Give me a second. I think even Oprah, even the chat run faster. Right? Like I'm comparing between both. Yeah, I think. Yeah. 
Here's the truth. All right. So try it. It's for free. And maybe we need to, uh, uh, like, you know, I mean, whatever software you think it's better. Opera GX. There's something called Opera GX. I don't know what is that. Let me search. Opera GX. Ah, there's Opera GX. You are right. What is that? Is it different? Ah, this is for gaming. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, I will download it. Let us try Opera GX. Okay, good to know. Uh, this is the first time I hear about it. Opera GX. So guys, search for Opera GX. All right. As you see, click down, like uh, search for download. And this is their logo. You see their logo is like a circle, red circle. And look like this is uh, made just for gaming. And maybe this is why it is uh, a better and faster. Uh, let me try here. Okay. Opera GX setup. Okay, I will do it after I finish. Let us see. Do we have any in Skype? Nobody. All right. Yeah, usually things for gaming is going to be more smooth because simply it's play software of uh, things moving fast, etc. Uh, yeah, I saw a guy speaking against those, they call themselves the army of God. And he was saying that those are people who they are teaching hate. Imagine someone saying that we should have borders. Suddenly, he is a person teaching hate. Why? Because you know, you know why they want illegal bo uh, 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 migrant. Do you know why the mafia they like them? Because they want to abuse them. They bring those women, children. They are in the street. Look, they are sleeping everywhere. Women they will use for even children's for prostitution. You bring in a migrant. He cut he cut your grass for five dollars. Five dollars. Why you want to pay fifty, sixty dollars, at eighty, a hundred, five dollars? So they are not in love with the migrant. They want to abuse them. Me, me, myself, when I came to the state, I accepted a salary. It's not even a salary for a kid. Not even a salary for a kid. Because I have no choice. They took advantage of me. Oh, you are now just a student. You don't have your papers yet. So you have limited hours. We cannot give you more than this. And I work like a horse. This is why they want the migrant. So they can use them abuse them, make money from their back. They don't give you health insurance. They don't register you. They don't do anything right. And you think you are, you think, by the way, you think you are legal, you think they are, they are, they are, they are, they are covered by health insurance, you think you are working for a company. They don't. A bunch of pithy. So I have a first-hand experience of what it's to be to take advantage of when you are a migrant. I know it very well. It's a mafia. They don't love them. They want to use them. If a woman, she is 
good looking, she will end in a pimp room. If a woman she is not good looking, she will end in a back kitchen room. We know what they want to do with them. Suddenly, the liberals are people of a charity when they don't believe in God. Who of those liberals want to take any of those migrants to live in his house? Let us see, Nancy Ballou, she should even stay in her villa. She has money more, more than one villa. They want to abuse them. And I'm telling you about my experience. I was really so upset. I see a guy, and he is Mexican. He work with me. I do the same exact work. He got paid at least three times more than me. At least. And I do work more than him. I'm almost in call. Almost I have to be there. Always I, ha I cannot say no. They will fire me. I need a job. And yet I get the two little tiny money, which is almost useless. This is what they want to do with the migrant. And I'm speaking about my own experience. They are filthy, they are cowards, and they don't care for the migrants. No health insurance. Nothing. You know what nothing means? Nothing. And they give you the job which nobody want to do. Yeah, I understand, Bella. So they don't they are not in love with that. And you know, when when those children and those women they come and they end in the street because they are coming in a huge number to the point nobody can you see, if it's just a small number of uh, migrant, I mean they can they can be observed by society easy. But when you are talking about hundreds of thousands coming every month, if not, if not even millions, and then you find them sleeping in the road in the middle of the winter. You have responsibility as a human not to let this happen. And you know, if you say you want to open the country for migrant, well then open the country for migrant, everybody will come. Nobody will stay in Afghanistan. Nobody will stay in Pakistan. Nobody will stay, stay in India. Nobody will stay in Iraq. Nobody will stay in Syria. Nobody will stay in Lebanon. Nobody will stay anywhere. Most of the world is messed up. There's a lot of Chinese coming from China. And then after you give them the citizenship, they start complaining about this country. You know, my experience with, with, with the migrant, I want to speak about the Arab, my people. Once I, I met a bunch of guys, and they asked me if we, I go with them to a restaurant. You know, that was, I think, Saturday, Sunday something. So I went there. And they started telling me, if I am in Jordan, I will be living a very nice life. Here I'm nobody. I don't like it here. The other guy, he said, oh, I used to live in Kuwait. Man, my life is so good. I didn't know what I did to myself. I came here. Anyway, so each one of them, he started telling you how good his life was before he came to America. And then they asked me, what do you think? I said, I think you're a bunch of, all of you are, uh, excuse my language, a bunch of, a piece of shits. Because all of you, you claim that your life there is way better, but you are still here. Why you don't take your passport and leave immediately? Go. As long as this country is a garbage, it's bad, it's ugly, it's disgusting, it's nothing. Why you don't go? They got so upset from me and they never called me back.
I mean, look at the hypocrite. They sleep in the front of the embassy. God knows how many times to get a visa. If not, they cross the borders and they risk their life, or they cross the sea. They come, they wash dishes in restaurant until they get a green card. And then after they get the green card and get become a citizen, and now they are driving nice cars, eh, this country is bad, disgusting. Some of us are kids. <laughs> okay, well, you should not have kids here, my friend. This is about Islam. Don't don't bring kids here. It's your fault if you have kids around you. You know, you should have a, a headphone. Get a Bluetooth. Sometimes you cannot use a better word. I mean, you have to use it. What I will use, fertilizer? Okay, next time I will use fertilizer. This is why me, myself, I don't associate myself generally with Middle Eastern. For sure, not everybody is the same, you know. But generally, they are so hypocrite. He is coming from Iraq. Iraq is so beautiful. Come on, man. I mean, what are you talking about? Iraq is dust. Iraq, there's, I mean, it's messed up. But Iraq is beautiful. That's it. So why you are here? Go. What are you waiting for? So this guy, he was speaking about those Americans who they are going there and they are saying how evil they are, how disgusting, how bad. The bad is you. You want them to get in so you can use them, abuse them sexually, financially, labor. That is the whole purpose. Otherwise, I dare you to open your house for them and let your house full of them. You don't. If somebody gets close to your yard, well, you will shoot them. A bunch of hypocrite cowards. Anyway, do we have any... Uh... Do we have any Abdul? Yeah. No Abdul left. No Abdul, what happened? We have a dry land, Abdul. Nothing went across the border. Get a VPV drone to scan your area if you need to. Scan it from what? I don't care who is, you know, for me, who dare to come to my house. Don't worry. I have one way to enter. Nobody can leave. You get in, you can't get out. One way ticket to the moon. You know, you know the song I remember when I was a teenage. One way ticket to the moon. And I was saying, why those people want to go to the moon one ticket? I said, oh, this is Muhammad. He shouldn't. I wish we could. Muhammad, he went to the moon. But he have two way tickets, brother. How he came back? According to Muhammad, when he went to heaven, he found the Euphrates River and the, uh, the Nile River. Muhammad is trying to copy phrases, phrases from the Bible about the Garden of Eve. And the Eve, he thinks it's in heaven, in the sky. Yeah, remember the song? One way ticket to the moon. One way, one way, one way ticket to the moon. Oh boy. I better not to sing. People will start leaving. <clears throat> Should I change my career and start singing? Yeah. Uh, like, you know, when Muhammad, he went to the moon, oh, sorry, the, to the heaven. What I like about the story, actually, is the flying donkey. 
you feel like you enter Disneyland. And one of the stories here actually is how the donkey don't want Muhammad to ride him. Hold on. Look at this. From, 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 from Ishaq ibn Mansur, Akhbarana Abdul Razik, Akhbarana Muhammad told us from, 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 from Qutada that Al Buraq, which is the name of the donkey, brought to the Prophet SAW, it's like a shortwave station radio. On the night of Isra, which means the night Muhammad, he went up to heaven. The saddled, saddled and re, uh, 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 reunited. I don't know if I'm saying the word correctly, but he shied from him. What the heck? Can you believe it? The ugly, disgusting donkey. He don't want the prophet to ride him. Can you believe it? And then, look what happened. So Jibreel, the angel, he said to the donkey, you stupid idiot son of Muta. Do you know who is this? Do you know who is this? This is Muhammad. This is Muhammad Habibi. Do you know who is this? Look like this uh, donkey. He don't know he's coming to, uh, to who? Ah, there's a lack of communication in heaven. Allah did not tell his donkey where he's going. They just told him go. Ooh. And now the donkey arrived to do the ride, but he don't want Muhammad to ride him. That's deep. And then the angel says to him, you stupid idiot, potato donkey idiot, stupid. Brought shame to Allah. You are refusing to let the prophet ride you? And then look what happened to the donkey. And he said to him, there is no more, no one more honorable to your Lord than him. And then the donkey, he started sweating his ass. Look at the donkey. Imagine if you have a video at that time, video camera, and you go live in YouTube. And you are reporting such a story, and the donkey is a dripping poo-poo, sweetness, even he lost his teeth, even his tail went between his, between his legs. All of this because he was feeling the shame. What I did, what I did. Oh, my Rabbi, oh, man. What kind of a donkey you are? You brought shame to Allah. Allah here sent the wrong ride. You better take Uber next time. I mean, look at those stupid stories, man. Do we have any Muslim explain to us why? Uh, and really, Jibreel, he told him, like, shame on you, potato. How come he did not use potato? He didn't know about it. If I am there, I will say to him, potato, what are you doing? What's wrong with this donkey? Even the donkey don't want Muhammad. Is that because he smell bad? In fact, there is a story, there's a hadith about a person, he is a Muslim, he said to Muhammad, your, your donkey smells so ugly. <laughs> and then the Muslim, they start fighting each other. Anyone knows what they use? Anyone knows? Maybe we should talk about it next time we go live. They start fighting each other by throwing shoes at each other. Tell those people who they are struggling with audio to use Opera GX if they can, or Opera. They use shoes exactly, yeah. Sandals. Yeah. Uh, CP, CP, if Muslims believe in their heart that they worship same God as we are, uh, are they saved because Jesus judged them in what in their heart? No. You see, Jesus judged you by what is in your heart if you are a person who do not know which means nobody told you. Let us say you are a person who live in the jungles of the Amazon. So nobody mentioned to you the name of Jesus. You never received the gospel of Jesus. So how you can be judged? You will be judged by knowing 
not by not knowing. If you do not know the law, there's no law. So, if a person he heard that only believe in Jesus can save him once, he received the message. If a person he knew about the Bible, it exists, and he heard of the name of Christ, he have no excuse. Judging you by what you know is only if you are a person who have, let us say, you are cut out of civilization. Like, you know, just to make it simple, even if it may be silly, like the story of Tarzan. Tarzan is a child he lost in the jungle, blah, blah. He grew by, you know, the gorilla take care of him. Uh, fiction story, but let us go with it. Let us say you are a Tarzan who live in the jungle. You never heard of Jesus. Then God will judge you by what you know. God, he occupied us, or let us say, uh, 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 when we are created, when we see blood, we feel disgusted. You see, even a dog, even a dog, when he do wrong, he feel guilty. Is that true? Is that, is that correct or I'm making things up? So how a dog, he knew he is guilty? He hide. He put his head down. Look at this uh, picture here. The girl, she scream at him and he put his head down. You know, he's hiding. He knew and he's a dog. Is that correct? So when God created us, he did not leave us. Yeah, there's no picture. Hold on. Look at this. Guilty dog. <laughs> it's better than many human. <laughs> They go to the store, they rob the store, and they are so rude and so filthy, and they are so proud of their theft. Dogs is better than them. Hmm? Look, the girl, she is speaking to the dog. The dog is guilty. He knew he did something wrong. There's tons of videos in YouTube. He act as a guilty creature. He knew. Obviously, dog is better than Muhammad. He rape women. He think this is, and he he tell his people this is from God. Right. So if a dog, he feel that he is guilty and he understand what guilty mean, why human being don't? So trust me, even if you are a person who is born in the middle of nowhere, you in your heart, you know, you feel what is wrong. You know that killing somebody is wrong. You know that taking a woman against her will is wrong. You know that stealing something belong to someone else is wrong. You know. So God will judge you by what you know, which means what God gave you when he created you. You know. You feel disgusted when you see blood. Why? Look at this one behind the curtain. <laughs> he went behind the curtain. Look at their eyes. I mean, if we play those videos, by the way, I mean, you, you uh, look at their eyes. Honestly, I mean, it's it's so amazing how they are acting. Look at this girl here. She is schooling the the dog, 
And like he don't even dare to look at her. Like, oh yeah, they are talking about me. Look what they did. I did rip the pillow. Oh, yeah, it's me. What I can say, I cannot deny it. You know. And then they say to you that Islam is the one who make you better. Islam make you. Look what this doggy did. I mean, this guy, he is anti-education for sure. <laughs> he just converted to Islam. What happened, man? What? Why? Why you did it? What? 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 It's not good to leave this dog with the library. You come back, you find all all your document. All in the, uh, uh, I hope that Biden he will not take him to the White House because that will he will use this dog to rip all the document about his bribes and Hunter Biden. Like the, he throw the paper, the dog he rip it apart so nobody can spy and read. It's a shredder machine. Yeah. Look at this one. What he have in his... <laughs> he ate the yogurt or what? The ice cream? What he have in his mouth? In his nose? I'm not sure. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so yes, you know, human being, when he is created, God, he gave you a simple basic knowledge. Like, you know, when the Bible says that God, he taught Adam the names of things. This is not about names. That's mean God, he gave him basic knowledge. Basic knowledge of how to live. Otherwise, God is not teaching, he's not opening school to teach you a door, ladder, table, you know. This is just about teaching you basic things when he created you. Okay. Uh, all right. I think we have enough for today. And uh, I will try my best to come tomorrow if I could. And I hope we have a good time. Did we have a good time? I want to say thank you for all of you. And thank you for those who always support us by coming here or by uh, other kind of support. And I hope you will share the link with your friends. So people more will know how to find me. As you know, most of people, they usually they look for me in YouTube. But I think it's better for us not to be in YouTube. It's not, there's no future for us in YouTube, obviously. Uh, and I think actually, I think YouTube as a software is going to die sooner or later. You know, there's a lot of competition is coming. Uh, in the time of Trump, Trump, he tried to, you know, let us say to protect uh, Facebook, Twitter, uh, you know, that's why he was fighting TikTok. Uh, but I think the end of those programs are coming. More things will merge and they will die, especially with them being very much aggressive and they are not sincere and not honest. I believe even TikTok is going to die. You know, it's like a trend, you know, like a, a new software come, they go up. And that's why actually I say, I know many people they invest in the stock market never buy stock market in such a thing those are not even a business like a twitter facebook a TikTok. those they can be demolished in a day and all your money will go they are not even read what i mean what they own exactly it's a website nothing all what they have is a website it's not like a company who make airplanes or a company make cars or they have an asset, they have real property, they have... Those are nothing. They can be demolished in a second. Even Google, even Google can be demolished. Like, you know, Google tried its best to own everything. Like Android, they bought Android. Uh, YouTube, they bought, uh, YouTube is not part of Google, by the way. It was not. They bought it. Anything grow, they feel is going to have a future, they hijack it, they buy it. But the same one who made YouTube, somebody else will make better than YouTube. And they will grow big, and they will be competing. And then what Google will do, will buy it again? You will notice that those things is not really working no more. And 
companies which is controlled by the Silicon Valleys, the Silicon Valleys is moving because the Democrats are stupid. All the businessmen, all the rich people of the Silicon Valleys are leaving the country. In the world, in the like in the best scenario, they are going to a different state like Texas or Florida. So I warn you, if you want to invest, never invest in those websites. They have no future. They will be sued. They will be closed. They will be destroyed. Just wait. And one more thing, as long as we are talking about business. If you are a person who invests in Bitcoins, did you hear the news? Trump, he is said, if he become a president, he is going to ban it. So imagine all your investment can be destroyed by one announcement and your money will go. And Trump is right. He said, well, you, you don't have money. Your money is where? So if you want to invest, invest in something real, something is exist. You buy a property or you invest a company which is real, doing a real service. They have a real business. No, I'm serious. Trump, he said that, didn't you know? So imagine if Trump, he won the election next year. Okay, maybe you don't believe me. Hold on. I saw it. Huh. Yeah, this is January here. This is January eighteen, two thousand twenty four. Go read it. <clears throat> he is a big fan of US dollar and he is anti the cryptocurrency. And he will ban it. What you will do then? You don't even know who is your money. Who where, where is your money? Where is your money exactly? Which bank? Where? Where we can find it? Where you can cash it? So, uh, if a Trump he became a president, the Bitcoin business will be collapsing because you know everything is connected to USA. So good luck with that. All right. Uh, I don't know I, 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 what I what I what I saw what I understood. He spoke that he is a fan of the U.S. dollar and he is against all corrupto or uh, like those kind of uh, virtual uh, currency. He did. He's not only against one thing, no. You know, Trump plus Bitcoin. You see the word Bitcoin? Facebook, Libra, etc. blah, blah, blah. So it is what he said. They ask him about many things. In fact, he said that Bitcoin is a scam. He said that Bitcoin is a scam. This is what Trump. So this guy, if he become the president, and most likely he will, you know, then what you would do? All your business has gone with the wind. And he said it clear. He said it's a scam. So you know, people they become so greedy. Okay, you know this uh, uh, this currency is going so uh, high, so fast. Everybody want to get rich, and then you will collapse, and then you will go home. You will bite your fingers. You will wish that you never stayed there. Anyway, it's up to you. You know better. Uh, me myself, I'm not really a person who like those. Uh, 
I don't know what is what, who is there, who is in control, who is stealing your money, who can take your money, who is in control of the server. One person controlling the server, he can steal your, you know, here. If one person, you have your password, you lost your money. Which means if a hacker, he hack your username and password, you lost everything. So, anyway, I'm not uh, an, an uh, economy ex expert, but for me, I believe that uh, investment have to be in something real, you know, something real, something you can hold into, something have a physical existence. Anything else is just in the wind, right? Yeah. And, you know, people, they are greedy. Everybody want to be rich. Then when you are greedy, you collapse. So if you have it, I think maybe it's better to stop being greedy and sell it and uh, get what you can have because you never know. Tomorrow might a bad news come. Like, you know what this guy, his name? Uh, I forgot the name. The guy he took, I don't know how many, a million, 400 million? I don't know. I mean, look how easy. I mean, the dollar, they're talking about what? How does guy he become so rich? So uh, uh, later, suddenly, this, uh, this currency co uh, collapse. People who have hundreds, millions of dollars, it's gone with the wind. Where are you going now? There's nothing. How you can take it back? At least banks, they have guarantee, the government, etc. They have asset, they have, uh, they have building, they have a property, uh, they have mortgage, they have many things, you know. You can go after them, you can get at least a, a million num number of, of, of the money. Those, they don't know where they are. Who are they? You don't know. Yeah, Bankman. Even his name is Bankman. Bankman. <laughs> He's made for this, huh? His name is made for that. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, I heard the news about, like, uh, China and India and the end of the dollar. And uh, all of this is garbage. Here we go. India is coming back to the dollar. Russia itself, their money is in the dollar. Emirates, Bahrain, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, their money in the dollar. The Chinese. So you hear a lot of news about fighting the dollars. They want, you know, they are using, you know, joining bricks and eh, it's not going to work because simply the dollar is the storage of wealth of all countries in the world and they cannot get rid of it. They cannot. It's like, you know, mission is impossible. Good luck with that. Anyway, I want to say thank you all for being here. May the Lord bless you. And until we see you soon again. God is good, so is Jesus. And Islam is nothing but mental illness. Muhammad, he took shower with dead dogs and women of blood from period. A clear evidence of his mental illness. His promises about heaven, about endless penis, big vagina, one mile ass, is a clear evidence of mental illness. Shaitan, he sleep in your nose, piss in your ears, round himself around your penis go inside your anus is a clear statement of someone suffering from mental illness if you don't believe me that's your problem thank you god bless you and see you soon take care